Hello, all. Um, I'm here to talk about the wonderful world of parasites and interactions with other organisms, their host. Um, for the past seven years, I've been working with wading birds to some extent, past seven years, um, and working with Chilean flamingos down in the Bronx Zoo and wa other wading birds down in the Everglades National Park where I did my internship where we looked at interactions between wa wading birds and alligators. Um, I took a class my junior year that blew my mind. Um, it was a parasite tutorial um, with Helen Hess, and we heard stories about trichinella living in a single muscle cell in humans and pigs, and that blew my mind, a multicellular or organism living in a single cell of another organism. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> so I decided to take my interest in uh, parasites, my newly found interest that consumed my life. I couldn't eat food that just the idea of maybe there's a parasite in here um, <laughs> kind of scared me. Um, so I did that. I worked with parasites, and I decided, what the hell? Why not work with birds as well? Um, so I looked at bird-parasite interactions for my senior project. Um, we asked two simple questions. Um, what kind of ectoparasites are found in the birds nesting on Great Duck Island? And how intense the infestation was, if there was any. Um, we have four species of nesting birds on the island. Leeches, storm petrels, black guillemots, um, Great black, greater blackback gulls and herring gulls, and occasionally we have I, a common eider nesting on the island. Um, so moving along, um, we have already a, a sort of dynamic here on the island. Uh, most of the island is vegetated, and certain portions on the berm area are non-vegetated. And birds, birds nesting on, on herring gulls nesting on the island are preferentially selecting vegetated areas on the island. And we wanted to see if ectoparasites had an effect on that. So we did a few tests on that to see if there, that dynamic was working out, if they were avoiding parasites. Um, again, 62% of all birds nesting this season, uh, this past season, were nesting in uh, non-vegetated habitat. So they're selecting for habitat that's, that's already uh, scarce. Um, so we did that. Um, methods, how we did what we did. Um, so it's also trapping European hares that are introduced on the island to see if there's transmission between the hares and the seabirds on the island. Um, so we set habit heart traps on known European hair uh, bunny trails. Um, we also trapped for adults, which consisted of a trap that was set at the nest, um, and we trapped and examined uh, uh, adult herring gulls and blackback gulls. We also looked at nestlings. Nestlings are easy to catch because they can't fly. Um, so we did visual examinations that lasted for 90 seconds. Um, we also deployed a dust ruffling technique on the black guillemots on the island, um, which consists of a protein dust um, insecticide that's highly bi biodegradable and fast acting, so it wasn't any harm to the uh, organism and the researcher. Um, so the fun facts. Um, so looking at the table, the one thing you need to get out of all this is that there was low species diversity on the island as far as ectoparasites go, low pre prevalence on the island on all nesting birds on the island, um, and low infestation rates. There weren't many, there weren't a lot of species, and the prevalence was low, and there weren't that many, um, on each bird there weren't that many ectoparasites. Um, so after we ran a few tests, we found that if you were reared in vegetated habitats, you were twice as likely to have ectoparasites, which is cool. Um, so that dynamic um, sort of suggests that their birds are selecting non-vegetated habitats to avoid uh, uh, Dectoparasites found in a nest there. Um, we found a species called O. bursa um, that uh, has been demonstrated to have effect on nestling growth. Um, so future studies should look at that dynamic to see what effects um, uh, that parasite has on the host. Also looking at microhabitat differences between both sites will be something to look for in the future. Um, looking at the parasite not the host and seeing how those habitats affect the host and why there are more parasites in vegetated areas as opposed to non-vegetated areas. Um, also, another thing to note, our European hares that we sampled had 16.5 ticks on each of them. Um, previous studies have shown that there's, the average is around 4.6. So there's a heavy uh, tick load on these guys, and looking at how uh, these ticks affect their population will be something to look forward into the future as well. Um, and my future, I, I plan to continue parasitology in my graduate studies, um, so a field that I am completely obsessed with, and <laughs> yeah, so questions. <laughs> yes? Are they deer ticks? Uh, so the question was, are they deer ticks? And uh, no, they were rabbit ticks that we found on these guys. Um, yeah. 
No, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 uh, is the effect of having the ectoparasites in so, an organism or not? So I mean, what what's the 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 larger importance of whether you know the extent of the ectoparasites on the host or so, not? So the question is, what's the effect on uh, the host? Um, so for most parasites, um, they affect nestling, nestlings mostly, um, and they affect overall growth rates. And high infestation rates among a population can affect a population um, as far as recurrence of new individuals into that population. So that's the effect at, the, at a population level. So it weakens the health of the species yes, as yes. a host. Yeah. 